Maddie, and today I'm having fun at the beach. I love watching the waves. There are big ones, small ones, little splashy ones. Remember, you mustn't play in the waves or near the water without a grown-up. It's really fun to watch the waves rush against the beach and then run away from them so your feet don't get wet. I love the sound of the waves crashing on the beach too. Can you hear them? But do you know why the sea is always moving? And where do the waves come from? How do waves work? Let's find out. How does it work? Waves. There's something very important we need to make waves. You can sometimes hear it and you can see it moving things like my hair or this, <laughs> but you can't see it. Do you know what it is? It's the wind. Waves can also be made by tides. This is the rising and falling of the sea level as it moves in and out. When a wave is made by the wind, the wind blows over the top of the water, making the wave. Far out at sea, hundreds of miles away, storms and wind make waves. And those waves keep moving until they reach the shore. Here comes a wave! <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> so if all this water is coming towards us, why doesn't the beach fill up with water? Let's find out. Imagine that this tub of water is the sea. I'm going to make a storm by blowing through the straw to show you how the wind makes waves. Can you see? When I blow, my breath makes small waves and they carry on until they reach the end of the tub. Now I'm going to put a cork in the water. What do you think will happen to the cork when I make waves? Let's see. The cork bobs up and down in the water and the waves move forward, but the cork just stays in the same place. That's because the waves don't move the whole of the sea forward. It's just the energy in the wave that moves forward. The energy moves through the water to the shore in a wave. To find out why this happens, I think we need to take a closer look. When the wind blows across the sea, it pushes against the water, making ripples. The wind pushes the ripples, making them bigger, turning them into waves. This makes the water spin in circles. The more wind, the bigger the circles, and the bigger the waves. This spinning makes energy that travels through the water for miles and miles until it reaches shallower water. When the waves reach the beach, the bottom of the circles hit the sea floor, slowing them down. But the top of the circle keeps moving at the same speed. This makes the top of the wave trip over the bottom part of the wave, making a breaking wave. That was really interesting, wasn't it? Waves can be great fun. Look at it go! I've come to a place that makes enormous waves so I can show you the energy inside them. It's a surfing park. Here they make artificial waves. That means they're not made by energy from the wind. Instead, the waves in this pool are created by a huge machine that rushes through the water. Can you see the bar running alongside the wave? The bar is attached to a big bow underneath the water. And as the bar moves through the water, it makes a circle of energy. And that energy makes the waves that go all the way to the shoreline. You must never go in the sea or play in the waves without a grown-up. But so I can show you the energy inside them, I'm going to get changed and get in the water myself. OK, I've got a board and I'm going to wear two special cameras so you can see how the wave works when I'm in the water. Ooh. 
Okay, let's switch these on and ride some waves. Here goes. <laughs> it's a bit cold. <laughs> right, here comes the first wave. Whoa, look how fast I'm moving. And can you hear? It sounds like I'm in a washing machine. <laughs> Okay, I've got to wait another minute for the next wave. Woo! And remember, it's energy from underneath the water that pushes my body ball along to the shore. And now I'm coming into the shore, the wave is hitting the bottom of the pool and breaking. <laughs> I loved finding out how waves work. What was your favourite bit? Remember the name of the force that creates waves. That's right, it's called energy. Did you hear the sound the waves made when I was on my bodyboard? <laughs> and did you see how quickly the waves pushed my bodyboard through the water on the special camera? When we come to the beach to watch the waves, there are lots of fun things we can do. And as a special treat, you might even have an ice cream. Mmm, delicious. There are lots of different flavours of ice cream. Do you have a favourite? Mine is vanilla. But how does ice cream get so creamy? And how does it get cold? Do you know how ice cream is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Ice cream! And to find out how ice cream is made, I've come to a farm that makes ice cream. The main ingredient we need is milk. But do you know where milk comes from? Here's a clue. <laughs> what animal makes that sound? That's right, it's a cow. <laughs> There are lots of different types of milk, but this farm makes ice cream out of cow's milk. To get milk from the cows, they all go in here. It's called the milking parlour. The cows on this farm are milked twice a day, once really early in the morning at five o'clock, and again in the afternoon at four o'clock. And that's Slab's job. The slab attaches a piece of equipment called a cluster to the cow's udders. That's the part where the milk comes out. Each cluster has four cups and they gently collect milk from cow's udders. The fresh milk then goes up these pipes so it can be processed and used to make ice cream. Milk is our main ingredient, but we need a few others to make ice cream. Here we've got some milk powder, cream and a few different types of sugar. Next, the right amount of ingredients are measured using weighing scales. All of the ingredients are poured inside this machine. It's called a batch pasteuriser and it's a little bit like a giant mixer. As the temperature goes up, the ingredients are added bit by bit. Including a special type of liquid sugar called glucose. The glucose is really gloopy, isn't it? The last thing to go in is the cream, and Claire's giving me special permission to help. This is going to taste so good. Inside the batch pasteurizer is a huge whisk that's mixing all of the ingredients together. But the machine is also heating the milky mixture up. The batch pasteuriser heats the mixture to 82 degrees. And this will help to get rid of some of the germs that will keep the ice cream fresher for longer. And this is called pasteurising. And then it cools the mixture down to 3 degrees. The mixture has to stay inside that machine for a whole day and a whole night. But here's some that was made yesterday inside this huge holding tank. It's like a giant fridge. It's really creamy, but it doesn't look like ice cream yet. And that's because it's not cold enough. To find 
out the temperature of the mixture right now, I'm going to use one of my special gadgets. This is an infrared thermometer and it sends out a beam of light and when it hits a surface, it reflects back to a sensor and it will tell us what the temperature is. Right now, the mix is about five degrees, but to become ice cream, it has to get much colder. So it gets poured inside this machine. It's called a batch freezer. Inside the batch freezer is a barrel that's surrounded by pipes which are full of very cold water. This makes the barrel cold, so when the mix turns around, the mixture becomes cold too. Our mix needs one last thing, and that's the flavour. And today we're making black currant ice cream. And just take a look at this. The black currants are mixed with some of the liquid ice cream. the mixture gets colder, it also gets thicker. And that's because tiny ice crystals are being made, which thickens it up and turns it into ice cream. And the batch freezer keeps mixing the ice cream until it's super smooth. Can you hear that beeping sound? That means that time's up and the ice cream's ready to come out. Whoa! Now it looks like ice cream. It's so much thicker. Let's use my infrared thermometer to see what temperature it is as it comes straight out of the freezer. And it says it's minus six. So the mixture has gone from five degrees when it was a runny liquid to a solid frozen ice cream, which is now six degrees below zero. That is so much colder. And there are now lots and lots of ice crystals inside the ice cream, making it really thick. All that's left to do now is taste it. Mmm, that is delicious. I loved finding out how ice cream is made. What was your favourite part? Do you remember the part of the cow's body where the milk comes out? That's right, it's called the udders. Did you hear the sound the cows made at the farm? And did you see the temperature of the ice cream on my special thermometer when it came out of the batch freezer? So the next time you go to the beach and you watch the waves crash against the shore, you'll know how they work. And if you have an ice cream as a special treat, you'll know how it was made. Right, I'm going to finish this one. <laughs> I'll see you next time.